Hello internet, I am doing the girls of YouTube tag, hashtag girls of YouTube tag. I am so prepared for this, a video about how I make my YouTube videos. This is, this is great. We're off to a great start, which is pretty accurate. This is pretty accurate to how I make my videos. So I've been making videos on Cat of Diamonds since 2009, and then I started Fanish Reviews three years ago in 2013, pretty sure. I've been a part of two collaboration channels, The Awkward Knots, which is now over, and I'm currently on Project Nerdy, where I post every fortnight's Thursday. Because I have such a wide variety of content across three different channels, as well as other videos that I make for other things, I am going to focus on what it's like to make a video just standing in front of the camera. I'll do that from start to finish and then I'll also talk about some extra bibbly bops into making other videos. Okay, well here's a nice blooper. I just found a whisker from my cat in my hair. Seriously, it was just in my hair. I thought it was mascara that I got in my bangs, but nope. It was a whisker. That leads us into pre-production nicely. I very rarely script my videos. The scripted videos I have are like countdown videos or top five lists or tips or tags. If I do a vlogging type video, I generally have an idea of the kind of content that I want to get, but then I will just shoot off the cuff. Same thing if I'm reviewing books. I will just get everything prepped and turn on the camera and go. This does make it really hard to close caption my videos. At the start of every year, I try to make sure I'm captioning every single one but as the year goes on and my videos get longer it does get very difficult to do this which is why I have turned on the closed caption submitting. I believe in closed captioning and accessibility. I absolutely do, and my excuses are excuses. I work full time 40 hours a week. My commute to work and from work generally takes an hour, if not more, because I take public transport. And on top of making YouTube videos, I'm also reading content for my booktube channel and for my soul, as well as a cosplayer, as well as hanging out with real friends. Sometimes I actually get to do that, but I think I'll talk more about that later because that's in post-production Another factor that goes into making a video is deciding when I'm going to do it today is one of my days off work So I am filming it now if I'm filming on my day off I'm really hoping that I can do it in the middle of the day where there's natural light coming in However, today is an overcast cloudy day So I am using my lamp as well as a studio light So that is one of my lights that I have on when I film it's a default setting just for those three bulbs. And that is my studio light that emits some blue hue. Hence, I have a warm side and a cool side when I use those lights. I know that it's a weird lighting setup, but I actually kind of like it because, you know, there's the John Green blue book over here, and then I have my Harry Potter section over here that is bathed well with warm light. If I'm standing here filming in front of my bookcase, it means I'm filming on my Nikon D5500, which looks like this. My setup is this tripod as well as my Nikon, and I have a Rode video mic. What I'm doing my daily vlogs on is my iPhone 6S. And it's also what is getting my B-roll footage or supplementary footage for this video. I usually have a life proof case on it with an external battery so I can film longer and more content when I'm going to special events, but um, it broke or the charging port broke so it's not actually charging the external battery or my phone so I need to go figure out that with life proof. But this is a Team Mystic sticker I got while I was Pokemon Go hunting. Just started to live on this uh, extra case. There's nothing else, I just wanted to point it out. So after I have my lights on, I will make sure that my Rode video mic is hooked in and turned on, and then I will frame and focus the video. Today's frame is nice and wide. I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of what I usually cut out of my frame of the video because this part of my room is always very messy. And then after I've chosen the frame, I use a book to focus so that I can figure it out. I use this lens, it's a Tamron. I'm not sure what the range on it was. It was a hand-me-down free lens that was compatible with my Nikon once I got it. And while this lens is compatible with the video component of my Nikon, it is not compatible with the autofocus component so I have to do all of my own focusing and then stay still which I do think changes the content of my videos a little bit I think I forgot to talk about this but something I do before turning on the camera is deciding what my hair and makeup is going to be last night I fell asleep in my braids here's my excellent bed head from last night yes yes 
That way I have this crimpy textured look. When I have color in my hair or if my hair is a lot more fresh, I will try to film multiple videos. Today is Harry Potter's birthday, which means I am late and actually filming this video from my original plan, but I am wearing accessories that have to do with my day, as well as when I'm filming multiple videos in a day, I will probably just change my accessories. I might do a light makeup look and then a heavier makeup look in other videos, and I will organize which videos I shoot in that order, but today, so here's my before, and here is the after, including the glasses. But in general, if I'm going to wear makeup at all for a video, I will only do lips, mascara, and then I will line the upper waterline of my eyes so that my eyes are a little bit more defined. If I'm wearing contacts in a video, I will probably do more of an eyeshadow and cheek look, but because my glasses are so much of a statement, I don't really bother with any extra makeup. So I've just taken out the braids, and I have a helper who needs to decide that she's going to leave, but you know, I feel really guilty for kicking her off. You can see the mess in my background. Yeah, behind the scenes. I've already discussed that filming happens here. I don't really think I need to talk about what I film because if you want to subscribe to my channel and just look at all the content I've already made, you'll know what I film right here. I will talk about my daily vlogging process a little bit later, so let's move into post-production. I will make sure to turn off my lights and my mic and my camera because the times that you forget to turn off your external mic and then find the battery dead later and it's a 9 volt battery that you have to go track down, it's really annoying and it throws off your filming schedule, so I try to make sure it's the first thing I turn off when I stop because I do have a rechargeable battery for my camera and I have two of them, so usually one is in the charger over on the wall and one is in the camera so if I do happen to forget and leave the camera on it's usually not that big of a deal. I will move the content that I filmed off my phone and or camera onto my computer. I do all of my computer editing on Cyberlink PowerDirector. I'm currently using a partial version that was free with my computer and it's been okay so far. I used a older full version on my older computer that was really great and so I can't actually use all of the features that I used in that version in the new version. However it has worked for me so far because I haven't been able to set enough time into the bigger more editing lengthy processes that are in progress. So for right now the point and shoot simple stuff, unboxings, vlogs, standalone rants. It's good editing software for that. However, once I'm moving into more intense content that needs more special effects or slowing down or speeding up, I'm going to need to either upgrade this version or find out a way to budget for a better editing software, which then I'll have to learn all the new tricks for. But I've been using PowerDirector for five years now, so I'm pretty comfortable and familiar with it, which makes finding a new editing software really really daunting. For this video, I'll be editing on my bed. Usually I edit downstairs on the couch while something is going on in the background, whether it's roommates talking or the TV or watching TV with my roommate, and then I have my headphones on so that I can edit and not annoy the shit out of everybody else. As narcissistic as we vloggers are, it's still sometimes editing is really tedious and I have to step down and Put it away. Depending on what I am making, the editing process usually takes a minimum of 30 minutes, otherwise it can take up to 6 to plus hours over the course of a few days if I have to set it down and put it away. Which is another reason I'm not on a filming schedule, I just film whenever I have time. Or when I'm doing Vita, which oh my god Vita. More about that later. When I'm done, I will render in two different formats. One is one that YouTube says it likes and hasn't been working for a good few months now and did previously work and then in a second format that YouTube actually accepts but I don't actually like saving in and so I will trash that as soon as it's uploaded. It's like makes it twice as complicated and I don't know but I haven't really had time to delve into the why this format isn't working for me right now so I just do two formats and I move on. I use a version of Adobe Photoshop for making my thumbnails. I'm not really sure which one. If I'm really super fast and lazy I'll use paint but usually I'll use Adobe and just take a screen grab from the content itself. I very rarely actually do poses. Or if I know I'm going to do an unboxing, I'll make sure that I hold it and smile and then have like a beat where I can take a screen grab. If I film something on my phone, I will keep that video file on my phone for as long as possible and try to take screen grabs on the phone itself and then send them to myself. I usually end up doing more description box stuff on the Fanish Reviews channel because I'm adding book links and review links and 
tag links, whereas here on Cat of Diamonds, there's only like one or two things usually to add. I have a default setting that has all of the like branding stuff, follow me stuff, closed caption request, cute little phrases and fun symbols and that's all default and automatic so that even if I don't have time to do anything too personal in the description box there's at least content there. I have moved away from free fonts into purchase fonts where I've gotten most of them from the hungryjpeg.com. I will put a link in the description. They have amazing deals especially if you're on a budget and don't actually make enough money for your YouTube videos to pay for any of your things from your YouTube videos. It's a little bit of an investment up front but but I've spent $100 on that site so far. There's freebies that get posted every once in a while, but I have so many new fonts to choose from and I have a license for all of them. That's really nice. I've also moved from free wallpapers from the internet into my own pictures that I've taken from my adventures to use as my end screen thumbnails. So all of this has already been a really long process. I have the automatically generated caption feature turned on. When I start to do it at the beginning of each year, it generally takes me an extra three hours to transcribe what I've said since it is rambly into the little tab and then the syncing and going back and to make sure that it's all synced. That it's been like a two to three hour process, which I really just don't have time with everything that's on my plate right now. I do like the idea of scripting my content that way I do have a faster transcribing process but right now because I fly off the cuff when I'm filming videos I it's just not a part of my process right now but I would love to be able to have a job where I would have the time to do this and put that time into it that is definitely the goal so We'll see. As I said early in this video, I've been making these videos online since 2009. I did start with my webcam, then I moved to handheld video cameras. I still have four of my older ones. So this was the wonderful flip cam video. It had your little thing on the back. It did not have the forward one. And I loved that it was so easy to just pop into your computer and then edit it definitely broke very quickly. I went through three different versions of these. Other people's flip cams are still working for them, but for me, I always got cheap ones or was too rough on them or I'm not sure. My handheld Sony Handycam was really great. It had the first little reverse screen so that you could see yourself, but after so much pulling this open and shut, the wiring that connected these two things together started to not talk to each other. And the reason I got this one specifically is because it was a touchscreen capable, so I could do a lot of deleting and stuff on the screen itself. I still have it for who knows why. For this video, I kept it because eventually I knew I was gonna need it, right? When my Handycam broke, I didn't have very much money, so I actually got a Kodak PlaySport, which is a waterproof, terrible mic'd uh, camera, but it does shoot pretty good video. I've made water world, water subject videos on this. I still have it. It still works. Like, I've still used this. Oh, I also did my color run videos on this because of all of the colored cornstarch. I didn't want to use any of my regular stuff. I did film a little bit on my cell phone, but from inside a baggie. And then I did the rest of my filming on this, which is still apparent when you look into the crevices of this thing, even though it's been to Waterworld since then. And then before I upgraded to this camera, I had the Sony Vloggy, which again had the reversible uh, LCD screen so that you could see yourself. It was very simple and it started to um, break. It doesn't actually close here anymore. You have to tape it shut. It possibly still works. I don't really know. And then of course I've mentioned my iPhone. Just got a text from my roommate saying she'll be home soon so I need to wrap this up. When it comes to making things for Instagram or social media that I'm going to promote, I have just some general programs on my phone. Square Ready is a big one. Photo Grid for messaging things together. Lumiere to make animated GIFs 
and then I have repost, video collage, after photo, bouquet photo, after light, shutterfly, visco, and color story. But they're in the Insta Obsessed folder because I generally don't use them that much, and when I am, it's because I'm using Instagram. And then for the revolutionary thing, I have a folder called YouTuber, and inside is Studio, the YouTube Studio app. Originally, I didn't think it was that special, but now I really do. I went to a YouTube boot camp up at Boulder at the Google headquarters there and it really did change my view on YouTube Studio as well as YouTube Capture. But my biggest revolution is a find from VidCon 2015 which was Adobe Clip. It is a free program. It is amazing. <laughs> Just found out that I've been talking for over 30 minutes so my video cut out. Good thing it wasn't that much. I was talking about Adobe Premiere Clip, which won't load right now, but you can take all of your videos from your phone, put them in the freeform editing software, you can bring the volume up, you can bring the volume down, you can add music, you can fade, you can transition, you can slow, you can speed, it's really truly amazing. My favorite video that I've edited is my uh, Lantern Fest video, which is available in the cards, which the cards, the cards are an amazing tool that I discovered at that boot camp as well. If you want my boot camp vlog, I will offer so link that. I think that's it. If you have any questions, absolutely, absolutely leave them in the comments for me. I will do whatever I can to explain my process to you. From being cut off though, I'm also chasing the battery option. And while I did say that I have an extra battery always, I've been filming for 30 minutes. I need to move on to editing. So at the end of my videos, I will usually shout out to whatever kind of call to action that I can do. Since it's this one, I will just do them all. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. I really do appreciate all of the support that people do give me by, you know, interacting with me in the comments, retweeting, or liking my videos publicly. I, I appreciate it so much. I've been doing this for so long and I plan on doing it for so long, but not gonna lie, I would really love to grow in my subscriber base and make some sort of monetary income to kind of not necessarily support my way of life, although that would be amazing, but really almost like a reimbursement for like money that I've invested into this. But in the end, that really doesn't matter to me. I love doing this so much. I love the community. Thank you so much, Alex, and all the women of YouTube and girls of YouTube and all of the community that FemTube is. I'm so happy that I've discovered all of it and excited that I made this video, no matter how long it ends up being. Until my next video, DFTBA. Oh, hi again. Crap. I totally thought I was going to be all done and I'm not going to reshoot up on the camera, but I forgot to say that I'm doing Vita. I'm going to make a calendar of all the stuff that I'm going to plan to do for the month and then shuffle it around if as necessary. I'm going to use my own backlog footage to get some of those videos out that I've really wanted to make but then haven't. And then I'm also going to use a point and shoot direct upload style vlogs with a few prompts. I'm going to use the Sexy Savvy Social Calendar by Amy, the WeVlogCollective.com calendar. I will link all of the things that I can link in the description. Hey, there's my teddy bear. Okay, bye.